Hello and welcome to Breaking Down Bad Books, a podcast analysing trashy bestsellers from a literary perspective. And today we're ending our divergent coverage by looking at some fanfic. Yep, I thought there's no better way to send off divergent than looking at what the internet has done to these characters. And all through reading the book and particularly watching the movie, I was thinking there's some sexual tension between Eric and Four. And I was like, someone on the internet must have explored this. And turns out a lot of people have explored this. Now I found a fanfic. It is called Peter's Punishment and it's by someone called N. Vylerton. And they've published this on the website archiveofourown.org. So go and have a look at it. I haven't read this yet. So it could be, it could be amazing. It could be terrible. All I know is that there's some Eric slash four content. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to read this. Before we get into it, I do want to just say that I now have a speak pipe. So if you have any thoughts, questions, concerns, corrections, you know, I, I have trouble remembering some characters' names sometimes. So if you want to fill me in on what I've missed, you can leave a voicemail at speakpipe.com slash breaking down bad books. And if I get any voicemails, I'm thinking I might play them on an upcoming episode maybe. Um, but yeah, fill me in, correct me, go for it. I know I'm getting shit wrong. And I will also just remind everyone that I will be picking up the divergent coverage over on Patreon where I'll be recapping Insurgent with chapter by chapter analysis. There'll be new episodes every Friday. I'll probably do the same thing where it's like three chapters per episode. And that is $3 a month uh, to gain access to that bonus content. So just head to patreon.com slash breaking down bad books. But for now, let's get into this fanfic. Uh, so as I said, it's called Peter's Punishment by N. Vylerton. The summary is after Peter, Drew and Al attack Triss, Four decides to punish Peter. But Four doesn't know that his actions will take a big turn. And in the end, he'll be the one who needs punishment. So I like that this has positioned us in a place that we're familiar with. Well, I know a time and a place, and that's important because I know there's some fanfic out there that is just like carrying on the story and adding in new characters, changing time and place. So I like that this one's set in what we know already. It does say under trigger warnings, rape, comma, I suppose. So I'm not sure what that entails, but if that is a trigger for you, feel free to turn off. I'm sorry. If it's not important to the plot, I'll try and cut it out. So chapter one is titled No Mercy and we're in Four's perspective. And he says that he's carrying Triss home to his room and she's passed out and he's putting her on the bed. She's just been attacked and he's like, fucking those guys. And he's like, Peter, I'm going to blame Peter. And so an idea crosses his mind and just like that, he's out of the room. And he says, my feet guide me to Peter's room on autopilot. So I'm sensing in this storyline, In this universe, Four and Peter, they fuck. So he slams the door open and he sees Peter there at the sink, cleaning out a wound. And so what I'm getting from this is that Peter has his own little private quarters. That's that's fun for Peter. And so then Four's like pushing him against the wall before he can even say anything else. And Four just starts punching Peter. He says, my fists meeting his sweat covered skin countless times, my knuckles turning red from the friction. But then I realized that Peter's pants sound a bit weird. Now, I, okay, <laughs> I'm thinking that's pants as in like mouth breathing, like uh, uh, not pants as in the fabric uh, trousers or anything, because that would be, that would be odd unless he's got a boner. I don't know. But he says he doesn't sound like someone who's afraid anymore, but like someone who's enjoying what's being done to him. Oh, okay. The obvious bulge in his sweatpants only confirms that. So Four's beaten Peter up and Peter's, He's really into it. And Four's like, are you fucking turned on by this? And then Peter just nods. He's like, yeah, (laughs) yeah, I am. So then Four's got his free hand and he's rubbing it over the fabric of Peter's sweatpants and is squeezing the bulge every now and then. I love how we're getting straight into it with fanfic. There's no bullshitting around, is there? And he's like, so you like that, huh? (laughs) And then he says, then you're gonna love this. And then... (laughs) I love this. And then Four starts kissing Peter. And it's a bit unclear, but it sort of seems like Four might have a bloody lip or something. And Peter is licking it up. Uh, I don't know. And then Four says, you're sick, Hayes, which must be Peter's surname. And Peter says, tell me about it. So Peter's like, 
very into it. But then Thor's like, this is what I'm here for. I'm here to punish him. So he turns him around, pulls down his pants, revealing his soft looking ass. Soft looking. Oh, and then Thor's like taken a page out of his dad's book and has taken off his belt and starts hitting Peter's butt with it. He says, the sound of leather on skin makes my dick twitch and I feel my erection growing with the screams and yelps that come out of the boy's mouth. So yeah, okay. All right. And he says, never hurt Triss again. And he's like, yeah, okay. So then he turns him over. Peter's like, you know, I think a bit broken down at this point. And Thor's thinking, no mercy. He grabs his chin, making Peter cry out. And as he licks away the tears from Peter's cheeks, the salt and blood taste fills Thor's mouth. So a a lot of blood licking, which I'm not really a a big fan of. (laughs) Kind of floors me just to say that out loud. Okay. And through a lot of the inner monologue, it seems like Thor is repeating behaviors that he learned from his father doing it to him. Yikes. That's a big yikes. Am I regretting doing this? I think I'm regretting uh, saying I'd read this, but okay, let's, let's press on. So Peter starts pinching Thor's nipples and he says, has she ever? And Thor's like, nah. And so <laughs> Peter smiles and starts biting down on Thor's nipples. And he says, I could lose myself in the pleasure, but if I don't get to shoot my load in the next minutes, the next minutes, <laughs> Peter might get worse than bloody cheeks and sprained bones. And he says, Peter, I'm going to fuck you now. So then he licks three fingers. He shoves it up Peter's butt. Oh my God, I'm so sorry that you all are listening to this. I don't know why I'm doing this. Um, and then Peter's like, oh, okay. You know, I have lube stashed under the bed. And he says, don't fucking care. It's meant to hurt. And then he says, hmm, this is going in a bit too easy. A virgin would be tighter. <laughs> okay, God. And that is when it's revealed that Eric has been paying Peter a few nightly visits. And Thor doesn't appreciate that. He says, you didn't think that was worth mentioning? You made me fuck you after Eric's dirty dick was inside you. Oh, Jesus. So then uh, there's a climax. Uh, I'll, I'll spare you the horny details, but there's a climax. And then Thor says, remember that this will happen every time you hurt Triss or any of her friends. And he leaves the room. So then we go to the next chapter, which is called Bloody Eric. And Thor's just telling us that he's still processing what happened with Peter. I was like, yeah, I think you got a lot to process, buddy. And he's like, maybe... Maybe the thing I have with Triss isn't that special, but also maybe I feel a bit confused about what I did with Peter. And I was like, yeah, you fucked a guy, dude. Maybe you're not fully straight. But apparently Peter has changed training groups and avoided for during lunch breaks. That's breaks, B-R-A-K-E-S. And he must be hanging out with Triss at this point. And she's like, four, are you all right? You're spacing out. And he's like, yeah, it's fine. I just have to do something. Excuse me. And so he leaves the hall. And everyone is happy and loud, the death of Al already forgotten, (laughs) and the fear of the last test hanging in the air. So that's where we are (laughs) at a time and a place. I think it's hilarious that even in this fanfic, everyone got over Al's death really quickly. So then he's walking down a hallway, and then he hears a laugh behind him and some footsteps, and then he feels something cold and heavy hitting his head, and he's like, oh, that's Eric's barking laugh. And so then he comes to... And he realizes he's in a bright, small room and his arms and legs are bound with ropes to the wall behind him. And he says, it looks like I have nothing on besides my socks and black boxer briefs. It, it looks like I have nothing on besides my socks and boxer briefs. Yeah. Okay, so if it looks like that, then, then that's what it is. And he thinks, since when does Dauntless even have rooms like these? <laughs> so then Eric comes in. He's a big, bulky man. And he says, I see Tat, you woke up. That's that without the H. I see Tat you woke up for and the hate and spitefulness that he puts behind his name is so strong. It could only be Eric. Well, okay. Yeah, of course it's Eric. I think we know it's Eric. Oh, and then Eric takes out a hunting knife and holds it against Four's neck. And he says, I knocked you out and brought you to the divergent cells. Ooh, we have cells. Divergent cells in the Dauntless compound. How interesting. And Four's like, oh, how does he know that I'm divergent? Oh, God, that I, I still hate that even in fantasy land, Thor is divergent as well. I hate it. So now Eric wants to take revenge against Thor for what Thor did to Peter as an act of revenge against what Peter did to Triss. Are we, are we tracking it? And Thor can smell alcohol on his breath. And he's like, Eric, you're drunk. And he says, I know, I planned some fucked up shit. And even I need a drink before I do it with you. So everyone's just like under the presumption that 
in order to get revenge, you have to have sex with someone or rape them. And it's just like, you know, Eric, you, you could just beat him up. You could just beat him up. You don't have to have sex with him. I, I, I don't know why that's the go-to. And so then he gets the knife onto Thor's cheek and he cuts a little bit and warm blood trickles down his chin only to be caught by Eric's wet tongue. What is with all this blood sucking? There was less blood sucking in the Twilight fanfic that I read last time. He says the man licks all the way up to the wound, slurping on the fresh blood, moaning like it's the best thing he drank in his entire life. And I can't help but to moan, both from pleasure and pain. What? Why is that a turn on for? Well, best thing he drank in his entire life is he never had chocolate milk. Because I think chocolate milk is the best thing I've ever drunk in my whole entire life. God, I love chocky milk. My whole extended family, we love chocky milk. Every like birthday, Christmas gathering, there's always chocky milk. And we're always fighting for the chocky milk. And we're like, oh God, yes, there's chocky milk. We're obsessed with chocky milk. Uh, But no, Eric's obsessed with blood, apparently. Okay. And Eric says, you taste great, stiff. Let me get some more. Are you a vampire? this, This isn't making sense. And then four, he's thinking, should I escape? Or am I secretly into this? He's like, "Hmm, maybe I'm into this. And I'm like, yeah, four, you're gay. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you, but you're gay. So then Eric takes his top off and four's like, oh, he's doing a show for me. (laughs) He's just admiring his shirtless tattooed body. And he's running his hands over his abs and groping his bulge through his tight black jeans. (laughs) Okay, so four's, four's realized, yeah, I'm into it. And then Eric's cutting little spots on his chest and his arms and his neck and then sucking away the warm liquid. What? Why? And then he says to Four, always wondered what you taste like, which is a poorly constructed question. Uh, I think, Eric, you need to be a bit more direct in what you're asking of people. But then he puts his mouth, which is presumably filled with Four's blood, against Four's mouth, and the kiss is sloppy, needy, and hot. (laughs) And then Eric says, you really are stiff, stiff. Which I think is the whole point of this fanfic. I think this author just wanted to make that joke. And so this is why we're here. And it's a good joke. It's a bit obvious, but it's a good joke. And Eric's laughing at it. He laughs at his own joke as he buries his face in my armpit, sniffing and sucking the sweat out of my hair. Gosh, wow. We're really ticking off a lot of fetish boxes, aren't we? And so then uh, Eric gets his belt out and starts beating up four with the belt. Jesus Christ. And so then Four's like, okay, are you done? (laughs) And he takes a step back like an artist appreciating his work. And he says, you're a bit bloody. A bit? You've just been cutting up his body and then whacking him with a belt. Yeah, he's a bit bloody. And then he comes closer to lick up the dried blood. What is going on? Why am I reading this? And Four thinks, who knew pain mixed with pleasure could feel so good? I should have passed out by now or feel more pain but instead I'm gasping with a half a heart on while Eric sucks on blood. That's a sentence I never thought I'd say out loud in my whole entire life. Gasping with half a heart on while Eric sucks on blood. (sighs) That's a lot of blood. That's a lot of blood sucking. Like at first I was like, okay, just a, a little bit of blood sucking. I guess that's like foreplay now these days, but this is a lot. This is a lot. And I'm thinking, I don't know if I want to publish this episode. I don't know. And then Eric says, oh, where are my manners? And he face palms himself theatrically. And he says, you probably want some too. And then he slices the inside of his own palm and presses it against Four's mouth. And the metallic taste fills his mouth. And Eric says, come on, suck it. And so he sucks. And he says, in a weird and perverted way, it feels good. I even can't help but to moan. I even can't help but to moan. Okay, uh, that's, a, that's a lot of words. And Eric says, fuck yes, I knew you'd like that. And then he says, okay, Peter, come in. And he thinks being all alone with Eric is okay. I can get used to that. Can you? Can you? I, I think you've got blood loss. You've got nothing left in the tank. I think you're going to pass out at any second. But he's like, no, I can get used to that. But when Peter comes to the party, everything can happen. Everything can happen. And last time I checked, I left him alone, crying in his room, whilst lying on the floor. I practically raped him. What do you mean practically? You you raped him. And then he feels the world spinning around him and he blacks out again, probably from blood loss. Okay, and then chapter three is, uh, okay. It's a flashback to some um, 
Some abuse from his father. So I'm just going to skip over that. Not interested in reading that. No disrespect to the author, but no, I'm done. Okay, then chapter four, we're back in the present and he's hanging from the ceiling with tied hands and feet. Uh, okay. And he's just woken up from his dream. So four's just strung up in the middle, still in his box of briefs. And Peter and Eric are making out and looking at him. And Four says, I see flashes of their tongues every now and then, (laughs) every now and then, and I feel my erection press hard against my briefs. And then Eric says, he's all yours, Peter. Oh, and then Peter starts kicking and hitting Four like a human punching bag. Okay, all right, this is just a lot going on. So then Peter takes a clamp off the table and (laughs) and places it on Eric's nipple. So it's a nipple clamp before going down on his knees to suck on Eric's leather briefs. Leather briefs. Oh, okay. This isn't where I thought it would be going. Okay, so then he's going down on Eric and Eric says, slow down, slow down. We've still got other stuff planned. Get the other one out of the cell. And so then Peter comes back and he's dragging a brown haired boy from Erudite. And Eric's like, yeah, this is just some boy we grabbed and you're going to fuck him. What is going on? Why am I reading this? So Eric cuts open Four's ropes, throws the boy over the table and says, fuck him. And in reward, we'll fuck you. And <laughs> Four thinks, what? How does this make sense? And uh, I am right with you there, buddy. He says, I won't fuck someone just to get fucked by Peter and Eric. But on the other hand, seeing both of them naked, hard and willing, uh, and with the fresh memories of my dad and a pulsating dick in my briefs, dot, dot, dot. Okay, this is, this is, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. So he's like, fuck it. And so he walks over to the anonymous boy and Peter says, all lubed up and ready to go. Just make him come and we'll make you come. And he thinks, just make him come. Easy. Okay. So now he's raping this guy. I think it's ridiculous that the author of this work at the start of the story said, trigger warning, rape, I suppose. Yeah. I don't know why you're supposed. It, it's most definitely got trigger warnings of rape about it. I, oh. So Four just starts banging this erudite boy. And okay, uh, he, he grabs the other boy. Okay, no, I don't need to get into it. The erudite boy comes and Eric says, good job. And he wipes off a bit of the boy's cum to feed it to Peter who licks it off eagerly. I'm sorry, I just had to say that. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, now it's out there in the universe. So then it's, then it's Four's turn. So then Four replaces the spot of the boy and Peter and Eric's cocks are both being pushed inside of him, stretching, stretching it further. I don't know if that's uh, at the same time or if they're doing trade-offs one by one. I don't know. And he says, and just like that, (laughs) they both fill my hole with their cum. And just like that, (laughs) isn't that the name of the new Sex and the City show? God, I wish I was recapping Sex and the City right now instead of this. And so, yep, it's over. He says, I could stand up and run away now that it's over and they are both sleeping, but that would mean I'd have to be able to A, walk properly, (laughs) B, find a door out of this weird cell and C, actually want to get out, which in that moment I don't, which is just a beautiful ending, beautiful ending to a beautiful story. Sorry about that, guys. Ah, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, yeah, that's that. Kind of regretting it. Um, there was another one that I saw, which was an Eric and Fall one. I also haven't read it yet, but it is shorter. So let's just pop into it and see what happens. So this one is called What He Wants by Deleted25. I don't know if that's their username or if, or if they just have a deleted account. Um, but all right, let's have a look. So in this one, Four finds Eric in his room under the simulation and some pleasurable ideas pop into his mind. So this is at the end of Divergent. There's that brainwash zombie simulation serum bullshit that's going on and only the Divergent people are spared or the evil Dauntless leaders. So Four's just running into his room to grab something and he sees Eric standing there with blank eyes. And he's like, oh, he's under the simulation. And so Four's like walking up to him being like, sucked in, Eric. Did Janine betray you? And Eric nods. And Four's like, calm as a bitch, ain't it? And Eric nods. And then Four's like, hmm, so you have to do what everyone says, huh? And you have to listen to me then, huh? And Eric's nodding. And it's like, I don't think that's how the simulation serum worked. Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't know. But isn't it odd that's just like you have this technology to make people susceptible? There's always someone that's going to turn that into a sex fantasy, isn't there? So Four says, "Okay, I have an order for you. Drop and give me twenty push-ups." And this is like a little test. 
But then Eric drops and does 20 push-ups and falls like, interesting. Then he says, kiss me. And so Eric, <laughs> and so Eric kisses four. And it was a soft and slow kiss that sent tingles up and down Four's spine. There's a lot less character work than there was in the last one. I feel like we were getting a lot of motivation for each of the different rapes and bloodletting scenarios that we just read. But this one is just like fun, frivolous. Maybe I should have just read this one and not the other one. Because yeah, he's just, he's just having a kiss. I mean, it's still rape. It is still rape. Uh, okay, okay. Fanfic can be dark. Let's just say that. So they're full on kissing. Four's legs are wrapped around Eric's waist as Eric pushes him into a dresser and their tongues are fighting for dominance. Well, isn't that sweet? So then Four's like, all right, we'll lie on my bed. So Eric does. Four takes off all of his clothes, revealing his semi-hard thick cock. What is with these fanfics and just having like semi-hard on like all the time? Oh, okay. Then he's, oh, okay. Then he's sitting on Eric's face and he says, eat my ass. <laughs> I feel like I should have done this on Patreon behind the paywall because I really am not comfortable with just anyone listening to this. Yikes. Ah, so, oh God. <laughs> Eric's tongue extended out and did a broad sweep over Four's hole. Just a broad sweep. Oh, jeez. Oh, Eric swelled his tongue around the pink muscle. Like, oh God, that's a vivid description. He lined Four's inner walls with his tongue. Okay. All right. This is too much. Oh, Eric continued to push his tongue in and out of Four's entrance. Okay, entrance, entrance, okay. All right, so that that little section's over. And then Four gets up and he says, okay, Eric, I'm going to give you a blowjob. Stay still while I do it. So he, uh, yep, unbuckles Eric's pants and he takes Eric's shaft in his mouth, <laughs> okay. So yeah, Eric is just ramrod still, just ramrod, was <laughs> a poorly all the chosen word of mine just then but yeah he's just getting sucked off and then four says fuck my face <laughs> so eric does that he says each thrust making the head hit the back of four's throat ah oh, geez louise and his thrusts were fast and brutal leaving four seeing spots jeepers creepers okay and then four says all right fuck me ah <sighs> so then that happens so yep you don't need me to read out all of the details uh so yep they're having sex and then Four's ordering him to come inside him, Oof, which he does. Okay. Um, and so both men are relaxed and breathing hard. And Eric goes over to his pants and pulls out a cigarette. And Four says, I didn't order you to do that. And Eric laughs and says, you really think Janine would betray me like that? You really are stupid stiff. And so then Four is obviously embarrassed because he's realized, oh my God, he's not under the simulation serum. And he turns all red and he's like, what, why? And Eric says, I was wondering what you'd make me do. Never expected that from you, Stiff, but don't worry. I enjoyed myself as much as you did. And with that, Eric leaves the room and leaves Four still bright red thinking of what happened. And that's the end of the story. And so it turns out it wasn't rape which is just a very happy ending compared to what we read five minutes ago. Jesus Christ. So a nice happy ending. uh, And it makes me feel better about my decision to read fanfic, to be quite frank, because I'm a bit scarred for life from that. I don't know if I will be doing fanfic again in the future. (laughs) Unless any of you send me ones that are actually like really good and not disgusting, uh, then I might consider that. So yep, sorry about this. Next week, we have a super special bonus episode coming out. I don't want to say too much, but we are looking at a short story called Kissing the Coronavirus. It's a piece of viral erotica. I encourage you all to read it beforehand because it simply must be read to be believed. But I will have a special guest host coming on with me next week to have a chat about that and probably tear it to shreds because it's it's absolutely terrible. Just terrible. And then after that, we're back into Eclipse, into safe... Stephanie Meyer land where there's no rim jobs. <laughs> there's, there is, there's blood sucking, I guess, but not, not in the weird way like we just read. Sorry about that. Don't forget to go to speakpipe.com slash breaking down bad books and leave a voicemail and head to patreon.com slash breaking down bad books if you want to continue reading the Divergent series with me. So I'll see you guys next week for that bonus episode. And then the week after that, back onto our scheduled programming of Eclipse. See you then. Bye. Fan fictions are always a mystery. You never know what you're going to get. 
It could be the perfect continuation of a story you treasure, or it could be a total dumpster fire. Master Roshi's the god of time? And he's like, it's been a hundred years, Goku! Gohan is angry and evil now, and he's it's the, what? The, the world is controlled by the great Saiyan. My name is Michael, and together with my friends Sergio and Jake, we scrape the bottom of the barrel and read the best of the worst for you on our podcast, So You Think You Can Fan In. Oh, little Mac, she cried. You're such a hunk. Take me down. He was a hunk. Okay, he said ugly, and he took her nap. <laughs> 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 You can give us a listen at anchor.fm slash SYTYCFanon or wherever podcasts can be found. Trust me, it's one for the books. Send your burning thoughts, frustrations, and grievances on this latest chapter of this shitty book to breakingdownpod at gmail.com or on Twitter at podbreakingdown and Instagram at breakingdownbadbooks. You can visit www.breakingdownbadbooks.com for all the listen links, contact information, merch, and more. To support the show on Patreon and gain access to exclusive ad-free bonus episodes, visit patreon.com slash breakingdownbadbooks. Ratings and reviews on your preferred podcast platform are also a fun, free way to support the show. Breaking Down Bad Books is hosted by me, Nathan Brown, who you can follow on Instagram and Twitter at NathanBrown90. Thanks for listening, and happy reading. 